Do you really want 70,000 rupees a month as a stipend while you're doing your PhD? And it will rise to 80,000 a month. Alongside, you'll be given 2 lakh rupees a year as a research grant for your own proposal of PhD and work like a boss. So if you really intend to do all this, it's not fake. It's actually real, legit and actually Indian government is backing this scheme with PMRF. So if you really intend to work like this, this video is just for you. Hello friends, welcome to another video tutorial from Shobos Biology and we talked about CSI, UGC net all the time and, and we have talked about GRF, we have talked about LS and everything but this is one new thing, you know, something new that you should all know. It is known as PMRF, Pradhan Mantri Research Fellowship, which has announced uh, very recently and what are the pros and cons of PMRF, what PMRF offers and how to apply for PMRF. This video is just for that. But one warning though, this video is not for everyone, not for every student. You can uh, watch the video if you want to know about the PMRF in details. But only few people can actually apply for this uh, PMRF fellowship, okay? And although it uh, can, uh, you can say like it's kind of uh, distribution in terms of choice, but yes, that's what uh, our government is doing these days. So let us talk about PMRF. And for short tip, I can say PMRF gives you fellowship 70,000 rupees a month, okay? It's not 32,000 or 35,000 like GRF. It will give you 70,000 in first two years, then 75 then 80,000 per month and 2 lakh per year as a research grant. So PMRF or Pradhan Mantri Research Fellowship has been announced a uh, couple months back and uh, right now it's uh, the process is in full swing. Now what is PMRF in the first place? PMRF is a research grant, a research fellowship as the name suggests. Just like the, you know the junior research fellowship, senior research fellowship which offered by CSIR or DBT or ICMR different institutes. Uh, or different uh, governing bodies. Now the thing is here, they will provide you some stipend, you know, the stipend for working under that banner to develop a develop and, and research with a particular proposal of yourselves, which they will back. And obviously that should be linked with social welfare. That's one big question for this PMRF. Because a lot of PhD candidates that are applying for GRF, SRF, undergoing GRF, SRF, they're not doing such kind of research which is which has direct role in human welfare. While PMRF is going to back those projects particularly which has immense role directly in the human welfare. And in that case, uh, our central government is going to pay that research fellow 70,000 rupees per month for that research for first two years, 75,000 from the third year and 80,000 rupees per month for the fourth and fifth year of that PhD program. And also that person will receive a PhD degree from that prestige institute. And that institute is IIT and IISC, the biggest names in terms of academics in India. All the IITs and IISC joint ventures together uh, to conduct this PMRF. And it's actually true because whenever there is a scheme, new plan uh, which uh, government implies whether it was Congress, whether it's BJP, it's always linked with IITs and IISCs because in this case they always intend to glorify this two part of our Indian education which they start to build like a massive brand throughout the world and they also did it a couple of times earlier now they are doing it again now now the question is you can ask whether you'll be able to apply for it or not like everyone is eligible to to that that is a big problem because the answer is no everyone is not eligible now you may ask whether to receive this fellowship you need to stay in IIT or IASC no that's not the answer that's fine but the project and PhD work will complete in IITs and, and IISC but the problem that I think here is not everyone can apply for this post only people only students who right now is uh, currently studying in IITs IISC, NIT, IIIT, 
as well as ISARs can only apply for the post. That means it's linked with either integrated master's program, integrated PhD programs, or it is linked with uh, BTech programs or MTech programs candidates. They can only apply for this post. Not anyone from the general field of any other university can actually apply for the post. You cannot. That's one big drawback. And for that same reason, people get really angry earlier that although you're providing a fellowship, many people with uh, respect to, they have the, the capability to do it, but still you, they don't get even eligibility. Uh, for applying for this post. That's one, one big drawback, but what you can do. Now, if you belong to any of these institutes, if you belong to IIT, if you belong to REISC, if you belong to ISARS or IIIT or NIT, then this is a golden opportunity all of you, not only in terms of receiving a high lump sum amount of money every month, but uh, to get the prestige you will get for working like that. Because, you know, when you get PMRF, you will be considered as one of the brightest of the scientists among this India. So in that case, it will give you a huge honor to work with institutes like different IITs and IIS to work with the project of your desire because you will be designing the project on your own. Now that leads to the second question, how to apply for the post. Now the eligibility criteria, as I said, you need to belong to any of those institutes that I said. Along with that, you need to have a concrete 8 CGPA constant throughout the last five years of your course duration. Then only you can apply. Now once you apply, the application process works in two-step manner. First step, it entirely depends on your research proposal or research abstract. They also call it SOP or research abstract. Now, you need to produce the research abstract. You need to submit a research abstract that leads to a research or findings that has direct implications in regular life or social welfare of human or which give a national benefit uh, of ours. That should be the primary motto of your research and obviously that should be relevant and that can be done with the amenities that all these institutes actually share or the infrastructure all the institutes actually share. So you need to keep that thing in your mind. This is the first thing. So what they will do is that they produce a selection committee and also they produce a national uh, committee. So the national committee is, is actually made from all the directors of IITs and IISC. They will actually uh, actually co contact with the center that is uh, the fund processing center with the respective place to do the PhD they convey the message in between so the selection committee is produced with many different researchers so what they intend to see they will see your research abstract and you also when you're submitting the research abstract you need to also add the name of two referee at least so that they will talk to your referee and also they can ask for the review of your work or feedback of your work of the prescribed work that you actually share. So they will first go through all this in very detailed manner. And once go through all the detailed manner, the national center, so NCC, the national committee, they are going to provide you the list of uh, vacancies that is available in all the IITs and IISC. And the list of vacancies, let's say 10 vacancies are there in one particular IIT. So in that case, once the list of vacancies are generated, while the selection committee will provide a list of nominated candidates from the post. Because you can, you can easily guess, huge number of applications are going to come for this post. Almost everyone from these institutes are going to apply for it. So because everybody these days has more than 8 CGPA, that's quite normal. So while they apply for this post, they will nominate few individuals. Let's say they nominate 25 individuals and the vacancy is 10. So now the job of selection committee is to select 10 out of 25. How will they do it? Now they will conduct a second round of interview and that will be direct face-to-face walk-in interview where you need to defend the idea of your research properly with that individual. Once you defend it correctly and you are selected, then that selection committee itself decide in which IIT or IASC you are going to do the PhD because depending upon the project, it demands different infrastructure. Based on the infrastructure scheme, they will place it in a particular location, in a particular institute to do your and conduct your PhD. Now, once you are selected, it's a very good thing because they are going to give you a proper 70,000 uh, per month fellowship and that will continue for first two years. Then after the two years, third year, the fellowship will rise to 75,000. From fourth year, it will be 80,000. And the fellowship will continue till five years if you apply from BTEC background, because you need to complete your PhD in five years if you're applying from the BTEC background. If you're applying from uh, for the, uh, there's any kind of 
uh, integrated course then you'll be given four years to complete your phd and if you are from the postgraduate uh, part if you already conducted if you already done your postgraduate studies then you'll be given only three years to complete your phd so there is always a productivity they, they want to see from your side because they believe you as the brightest of the century uh, of, of this country so they want you to work in a constant pressure means uh, you need to provide uh, what you are selected for that's why every single year after uh, the year is done of your PhD year, they are going to evaluate everything that you have done, whether your work is according to your project is working properly or not. If not, then they have the right to downgrade your fellowship to a normal value of JRF, which is 32,000 rupees per month, or they can also discontinue as a PhD student, which is very highly unlikely things to, to happen because obviously people selected for this post are really interested in times of research that's why they are selected so this is going to happen so you need to have a constant productivity going on and also different industries are also uh, now contacting with CSIR they are, they are collaborating together to increase the fellowship as well as to work uh, in, in a very close contact manner because industry based fundings or for projects have direct implications in human life that's why they are collaborating with different industries and providing uh, an outcome of this research to the industry directly. That's how CSR is also making profit out of it. So this is how uh, this PMRF is going to work. But remember, for the PMRF uh, process, it's only possible if you're from IIT, NIT, IISC, ISAS, as well as uh, IIIT. These are the institutes. And uh, a thorough process of interview is there. First of all, research grant proposal. And second thing, it's linked with the interview. So everything is linked together. So if you intend, if you belong to any of these institutes, if you, if you really need to go for it, maybe right now they only started it with IIT and IISCs, but maybe later in future generations and future times, they are going to involve some good institutes of India as well. But uh, it was mentioned that uh, they are going to select only very renowned institutes for that. So if you, so it's a part of uh, actually conducting your BSc and MSc from a renowned institute that you will be called for this post and actually eligible for this post. Now, if you don't belong to any of these institutes, then it's not for you. Now, it is really a thing to grudge about because, you know, uh, opportunity should be given to everyone. But what we should do, it's actually the, the idea of uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi. And actually, he thought uh, that the research that is going on is not up to the mark to serve general people of India. That's why he has been really forcing the department to work on those fields which are really important for human welfare. So that's all about PMRF. Uh, if you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video because I don't think many people know about it and obviously subscribe to get more and more informative videos like that. Thank you.